Well, I'll pass this follow up to Kobe. I know this was another thing we were talking about before we came on here. There were 24 cars in the All Star race last night. There are 36 full time chartered teams. If you do the math, that is literally two thirds of NASCAR's full time chartered teams competing in your so called All Star race. If 67% of the field is in the all-star race. How many of them are really all-stars? That's something else to consider as well. So Josh, I think you might've just answered the question yourself. I'll go to Kobe first on this one. Do you think it's time to maybe even reconsider what we're doing here and having an all-star race period? And this is an interesting question, Ben, because this is something that's been posed, not in just NASCAR, but other sports as well. We all, we all know about the criticism over the NFL's Pro Bowl because no, nobody's playing defense. Nobody's trying to tackle because, you know, you obviously don't want your franchise quarterback, you know, to tear his ACL in a meaningless game or you, or you don't want your star wide receiver to, to, to blow out his knee either. And people wonder, like, why are we still having the NFL Pro Bowl? And the same thing with the NBA All-Star game. Yes, it's nice seeing all of those awesome tricks and dunks and all of that, but nobody really plays defense in that game either. So people are wondering, you know, what's the point of having the the, the NBA All-Star game? What's the point of having the NFL Pro Bowl? I'm, I'm not sure if the conversation is the same in, about the MLB All-Star game or the NHL All-Star game. You'd probably be a better person to ask about that one, Ben. So when I'm done answering, you can, you, you can give your take on that. But I but I think a lot of people are, you know, just worn out from the All-Star race. It, it, it's, it's really lost its touch. It's, it's lost its appeal. And I, and I don't and I don't really see what the solution is. I, I, I think maybe just make the, the bush like clash at the beginning of the season, the all star race. I thought what they did in Los Angeles was really was really good. I thought I thought that was an entertaining product. And and, and, it, and it really had me all drawn in. But but the but the all star race, it, it's, it's really become like like a thing that the past. Maybe, maybe they can try to reform it in some way. So and I totally agree with the point you were making when you have like that many cars. In the field, like, are 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 they really all stars? Like, like if, if we're gonna use the NBA example, are we gonna invite bench players from the Miami Heat to play in the in the NBA All Star game, or are we gonna are are we gonna have the uh, the backup the backup quarterback for let's say for Aaron Rodgers? Are we gonna have Jordan Love playing playing the Pro Bowl as well? It's just you know, I think if we're if we're going to reform the All Star race, I think the field it should be a lot smaller and on a sh and on a short track. I think the Phil size in, S in SRX, which is going to be starting up in a couple of weeks' time, I think that would be a good solution. Put an All Star race on a short track, and and maybe have a maybe cut down the Phil size, maybe between twelve and fifteen, and and, and have like and have like elimination heats, some some something like that. And 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 I and I saw some people online also talked about the fact you know they're fixing up North Wilkesboro again. May, may maybe they take the All Star race. From Texas Motor Speedway and, and just move it to North Wilkesboro, and I think that would be a fun Saturday night short track race. Just to bounce off of what you're bringing up with Major League Baseball and everything, you know, there's been a ton of changes in Major League Baseball that I certainly haven't been happy about. And honestly, one of them was the fact that Major League Baseball's All Star Game was the only All Star Game that actually meant something because the winning league, the American League or the National League. That team, whoever from that league made the World Series, that team had home field advantage in the World Series. So all the best players on all the best teams were actually playing for something because should their team make it to the championship series and championship event, there was actually a reward for winning the All-Star game. And that's why the baseball All-Star game historically was the best out of all the four major North American sports leagues. Imagine if you want to go to the NBA, for example, LeBron James made nine NBA finals in 10 years. When he was in the Eastern Conference with the Heat and the Cavaliers, he was practically guaranteed a ticket to the NBA Finals because the Eastern Conference was much weaker compared to the Western Conference. Imagine how hard LeBron James would play in the All-Star game if that reward was on the line for he and his team. Home court advantage in the NBA Finals. That would actually make the game meaningful, and you would see a good product because LeBron James would actually be trying to play defense and play offense and score as many points as he can because if the Eastern Conference wins the All-Star game, they get home court advantage. I'm sure some people would probably not be a fan of that. That's why baseball ultimately took it away because they weren't a fan of it in baseball, but at least it gave the game some sort mm. of meaning. So I don't know if NASCAR could award some bonus points in the championship for the all-star. I mean, they're already, I, I think it's a reward to be in the all-star race. You have to win a race to get into the all-star race. So you're, you're, you've already done something to get there. Maybe give, you know, like a, a 10, 10 to one point scale for the top 10 finishers of the, of the all-star race or something like that. You know, they're giving out points in the in the dual races again. So it's not like they're they've entirely abandoned the idea of points in exhibition races that don't count towards the full championship. But 
you know, what we, what we saw last night cannot happen again. If we're going to continue to have this race, there needs to be, you know, there need to be widespread changes all throughout. Certainly the location is one of them. Even if the farce of a finish of, of a finish hadn't happened last night, Texas is not the right place to be hosting the all-star race. The racing wasn't very good. We saw a lot of tire issues. Like we mentioned, I don't know that a short track would be my prefer. I would prefer them just to go back to Charlotte. I think it's NASCAR's backyard. I think, you know, the event kind of had an identity there. It's hard to build an identity when you're bouncing it around from track to track, but you know, it would be a shame to see it go because the all-star race has reduced several great moments, but none of those moments have come in the last decade. And the event has certainly lost its luster. What about then? I'm just been sitting here. Well, you two have made some great points as well. I thought to myself, we've got the all-star race, but as you say, it's only for people who have won races. Let's make it all-stars. And when I say that, I mean, let's bring in classic drivers, people. Let's bring in some champions, race winners as well. Let's get Jimmy Johnson back for a race. Let's get Dale Earnhardt Jr. back for a race as well. Let's get Jeff Gordon, he, he's still quite competitive as well. He's going to be out of the car, what, three, four years now? Let's bring it back and have the Legends race instead. It's a fun exhibition race. Maybe not even run the cut cars so that they don't get damaged. Let's run some classic machinery. Let's, let's instead of instead of racing for this and racing, you can still race for the million pounds, but you change the aspect of it as well. It becomes a true all-star race as well. And it becomes more of a tribute to the fans, the fans who week in, week out, sit there, go to a race as well, give up their weekend to watch racing. This race was designed to give them something back and for the drivers to go out for a no pressure race. Let's have that, but bring in some classical drivers with maybe some classic machinery. I mean, over here in the UK, Goodwood works fantastic. The revival meeting brings loads of different drivers together, loads of different uh, eras as well, and it is always sell-out crowds. Everyone gets into the spirit of it. They dress up in 40s, 50s, 60s outfits as well, a bit like the throwback weekends we see at Darlington as well. Everyone gets behind it. If NASCAR did that as well, I think it would be booming because it would prove that it could be a stock car championship as well, and it goes back to its roots and says thank you to the fans. So okay. let's get some old ones back. Josh, I, I hear what you're saying, and I think it's great in principle, but you know, I, I do want to bring up Bristol Motor Speedway actually tried this in 2009, 2010. They had this Legends race. It was on ESPN. The ESPN brought their throwback graphics out and everything, and it was a great success. It was very popular, but in the 2010 race, Larry Pearson was in a very serious accident. Charlie Glotzbach just absolutely T-boned him. Larry had to go to the hospital, and that was when the event was scrapped because – we recognize these drivers are no longer in their prime anymore. It's great to see them back out there and driving, but there is the fear that somebody might get hurt, especially if you're using older machinery. So, you know, right. I, so, I think it would have to be a very controlled environment. I think it's a great idea in, yeah. in theory. I'm just not sure the execution would work great in principle. All right, what if we limit it then to a driver who has to pass, uh, uh, pass the physicals, get everything ready, and maybe limit it to the past three seasons if you've left in the last three years? That could that could be fair. Yeah, um, as you, know, you said, just you limited. Yeah. yeah, but even then, you know, I I would worry. You know, Jeff Gordon, you know, is what did he just turn fifty years old? I think, but he's got a back of somebody he's, twice his yeah. age. You know, he had some back problems late in his career. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr. had the issue with the concussions. So you know, it's it is it is a a worry of mine, especially when you get guys that haven't been in the car for for several years now. Um, you know, I think mm. it's again, it's it's a really fun idea, and I think you know you saw proof of that when they did the Legends race at Bristol, but. You know, I, if we're if we're going to talk about trying to improve the All Star race in the meantime, you know, Kobe, you you brought this up as well. You you obviously have limited roster spots in any other All Star game across all sports. The playoffs, I think, have been criticized because of the win and you're in thing um, that you know it, it kind of took from the All Star race. You know, no disrespect to Michael McDowell at all. Obviously, Front Row Motorsports are on a limited budget compared to the top teams. And it was great to see him win the Daytona 500 last year. But that one win alone got him into the next two All-Star races because they take all the winners from the previous year and all the winners from the current year so far. Is Michael McDowell really, if you talk to people, you want to truly define All-Star. Is Michael McDowell a Cup Series All-Star, you know, by, by definition in terms of what we think of an All-Star in other sports? And again, you know, I'm not trying to disrespect him or his team here, but I think if you if you're honest with yourself, the answer is not really. You know, he he was never going to be much of a threat 
in the playoffs. And that team has come a long way. And Michael has come a long way. But he's not on the level of a Kyle Bush or a Chase Elliott mm. or somebody like that. Do all the winners really need to be in the all-star race or should we cap it maybe at somewhere from 12 to 15 drivers? I don't know, Kobe, if you want to maybe take that question. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I, I already said that I believe that hey, that if you do it on a short track or, or any track, that it, there should be 15 at max. And I see Adam right there says that he'd vote for NASCAR's all-star race to move to North to North Wilkesboro Speedway. And that, would be, and that would be really ironic, North Wilkesboro Speedway, if they took the all-star race from Texas Motor Speedway, considering what happened the last time around when Texas took from North, <laughs> North Wilkesboro. So it would be, so be really funny if, if, if that were to occur but th yeah but mm, this is I, I don't really have much more to add here is i just hope nascar is able to learn from everything that went wrong in last night's all-star race at texas and make it a much better experience in the future and and, and as ben was saying josh i really i really like your idea i think that would be a lot of fun in theory but it but if we're but if we're going to do that i'm not i'm not sure how we'll be able to pull that off it, 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 as Ben was saying, you know, how, how, to, how to execute it. I remember watching that Legends race at Bristol as well. I remember when Larry Pearson got injured because I was because I was watching that race live on my television on ESPN. And that was, you know, it was really scary to see how he, how he got hurt like that. I'm thinking if, if we're going to do something like that, maybe if you maybe if you've been a NASCAR Cup Series driver within the within the last decade or so. I, th I think that could be something that might work, but might probably have to pass them, you know, some special tests, as you suggested, to make sure that they're still, you know, fit, fit and competent to be behind the wheel of a race car. Because I know, I, because, because I know, you know, with some of those drivers, you know, they go away faster than a lot of others, mm. you know, in, ter in terms of awareness and, and everything like that. I mean, just so to just a pin as well, um, we've got the last generation now of cars that are from last year that nobody's using anymore. Could use them instead. If, if, it's, if that's, that's a good true. If we put them in a qualifying format, just there's something there if if we want to change it. So, we're, yeah, we've got last year's cars just sitting around doing nothing. Let's use them. Yeah, I want to see ARCA do that. You know, I think that would certainly yes. help with the car counts. You know, obviously the bodies are similar, but. You know, if, if we just, I mean, back in the day, you know, Scott Wimmer uh, famously failed to qualify for an ARCA race. Bill Davis Racing said, the heck with it. Let's just enter the cup race. And he gets up front and actually leads a couple of laps, um, you know, because the, the rules are interchangeable. Mm. And that was in an era where NASCAR didn't even own ARCA. Now NASCAR and ARCA are under the same entity. So, you know, you, you see these super low car counts, particularly in the, the East and West series. I think, you know, there's, we just got rid of a bunch of old Gen 6 cars. Why not go use them somewhere else? Uh, real quick, because I know we got more show to get to. Uh, I want to say hi to Seth Lees here, and he has a comment as well. Hate to say it, time to bin this event. Sad, but what purpose does it serve? And I think that's a very fair question. You know, I, I would certainly, even five years ago, I, I would not be in that uh, group at all. Um, you know, the All Star Race, I think, like I said, has produced some very classic moments over the years. But you know, you do have to wonder at the same time what what identity is left for this race. What purpose does it serve? And especially if it's just going to be a clown show like this. I mean, the uh, Kobe, you brought up a Jeff Gluck poll a little bit earlier. The previous record low, I believe, was 17%, the 2016 Brickyard 400. It's tracking to be somewhere between the 10 and 11% range right now. So it's not just going to break the record. It's going to obliterate the record low. Um, you know, I, I always like to respect other people's opinions and, you know, try to at least see where they're coming from and hear each other out. If you voted yes on the Jeff Gluck poll this week, I would love to hear from you and, and know what race you were watching or what you saw in the, my finger slip. Watching the same race. <laughs> my, my, be like, I'm sorry, my finger slipped. I, I meant to vote. I meant to no, but my finger slipped. No. That, so, thought, so I'm going to I'm going to assume yeah. that. You know, I'm I sure there, are, but I'm yes, sure there are other surprised. people who meant to vote yes, but their finger slipped. I mean, there's always there's always uh, <laughs> multiple people in that group. I think it just cancels each other out. Go ahead, Josh, real quick. Yeah, I, th I think they meant to say yes. I agree. It was the it was the worst race I've ever seen. 